This is a quick video over Excel macros, and in this video what I want to show you is what Excel can do. I'm not going to really actually show you how to program it, I'm just going to show you what it can do, and in the coming videos I'll actually show you how to program many of these functions that I did. So in this video I actually had Excel program a, uh, or model a tank reactor. Now this tank reactor can be a batch reactor, a semi-batch reactor, even a, even a CSTR if I wanted it to be. So let's start the program. And let's start pumping in some A. Now the first thing you notice is that you can actually change the const or the uh, flow rate of A by adding in some of the changing the variables in these uh, uh, text boxes. And we'll even start pumping in some B. And again, I'll show you how to do a majority of this stuff. I won't go line by line, but I'll show you how I actually had Excel do this. So what we expect right now is it's a batch reactor. We expect the concentrations of A and B to go down and the concentration of C to go up. So that's that's pretty neat. Now the impressive part is, now that we have a, uh, a batch reactor, let's turn it into a CSTR. So now what we have, we have Excel modeling a batch reactor, whoops, modeling, oh that flow rate's much too large, and it's automatically shutting off the pump. So we have Excel modeling a batch reactor that's turning into a CSTR, a continuously stirred tank reactor. One of the big assumptions is, one, it's isothermal, and two, I guess the other big assumption is that it's perfectly stirred. So right now we have Excel modeling it from a batch reactor to a CSTR. Usually that's really hard. Usually you only have the equation for when the system's at steady state for a CSTR, and we actually have this, Excel modeling it when it's no longer or isn't at steady state. So it's pretty neat. We can actually see how the system is affected. We can even change the flow rate out to affect the space time of the program. So of course the concentration of C is going to go down because A and B aren't in the uh, aren't in the system as much. So, oops, that was at 20. So, of course, the concentration of C is going to go down. And we can see that by just playing around with the different variables. So you might be wondering, how did I actually do this? How does How is Excel even capable of doing this? Well, Excel comes along with this little thing called Visual Basics. And they call it macros. A macro, for the most part, is a, is a code. And this is the main code. This is all the code to run the main program. So if we look, I have it kind of, not too many comments, but if we look close enough, we can actually see this part right here is the, uh, it changes the color of the current data on screen one to green. So that's why the rest of it's yellow and this is green. Excel, that part of the code is actually doing that function, turning it yellow and green, where this is recording all the data on sheet two. So it's recording all the data, just as it is on sheet one, but it's continuously adding it on and not erasing the history. So we can actually go back as far as we want. And see, this is the actual recording of data on sheet one. And this is the animation for the tank. So showing it filling up and emptying. So if we adjust the flow rate, that code right here, this code is what's what allows this to empty and fill, and what causes it to, the, uh, to turn pump pump B off is shuts P off shuts pump B off if tank is full. So this is a code that shuts off pump B. So if uh, the worksheet shape two height plus worksheet uh, dot text box input dot B is greater than or equal to the shape height shape one, which means absolutely nothing to you, says turn off pump B. And this is a subroutine. This is a subroutine. So if we go to the module pumps and look for the subroutine off B, we get this. And this code right here is what causes it to shut off. So uh, cell, uh, range M17, that just says cell M17. Interior color equals 3. And that just means it turns red. And the value of it is off. So the characters inside of it is off. And that's what we see. You see cell M17 turn red and say off when we turn it on and off. Whoops. Overfilled it. And I need to add it so when you do that, it doesn't overshoot that. So that's a little bit more code I need to add in so you can't make that simple mistake. But we can also empty it out of this over-the-top overflowing tank. So... Code's not perfect by any means, but it does show you the general things that you can do with Excel. 
So in the coming videos, I'll show you how to do a majority of the stuff in this in this program.